So this question of how do we help clients bridge the political divide that is so prevalent and prominent within our culture and society, for me is, is the question of the hour, it's the question of the year, it's the question of the day. I think this is such an important question. And, you know, I have an interesting view on this. I don't know if it's the most popular view, but I've been thinking about this a lot, as so many people have been thinking about this too. I, I do believe that this political divide needs to be solved. I think this us and them mentality is so toxic for our culture. It's so toxic for society. And I think that if we don't look at the perpetrator within ourself and we only see ourself as the victim of the other side, we will never be able to resolve this problem because so easily in this political divide, you know, we're talking about my view and your bad reaction. I'm the victim of your perpetrating response. That response is so polar opposite. It's so bad and wrong. It sets up this victim perpetrator. And one of the things that I've been increasingly aware of, and this is interestingly enough, comes from a, a very powerful conversation I had with a family member of mine at a wedding recently who was totally on the other side of that political divide than me. And I was really like, I was like, oh my gosh, we're at the hotel. He is the only one at the breakfast table, buffet. And I was like, crap, I have to sit down and talk to this family member. And I really had parts that were kind of frightened and afraid of it, interestingly enough. And, you know, totally opposite political view of me. And I had that fear. I was in that victim fear place. And interestingly enough, through the course of this conversation, for whatever reason, this family member was vulnerable with me. He was able to have moments of vulnerability. And it was shocking to me to see how similar our vulnerabilities were. I joined him in vulnerability in a way that I never thought possible. And it was interesting because he was holding this view of not wanting to be controlled or overpowered by anybody in his life. He had, and this is the wound that he carried was, I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. I don't want anybody to control me. I don't want any political view to tell, to tell me what I have to do or what I don't have to do. He was so palpably frightened of being overpowered and dominated. And it was a moment for me. I was like, oh my goodness. That's exactly what I felt when the tables were turned on the other side, that I had the same fear of being dominated and controlled in a way that, did, that felt unsafe to me too. And we joined in this commonality of our wounding and our vulnerability. And it was really powerful for me. And it got me to thinking that what if each political view was rooted in our wounds? And what if our wounds were more common than we were aware of? What would that be like? What if we were able to see the wounding in the other person? Not the ways they're trying to protect themselves from us. I think the world would be a different place. One of the things that happens in IFS, internal family systems, is what we call polarizations or polarities. People call them conflicts, different views. Often conflicts or different views are protective responses to the same wound. For example, I can give you an example of that. One part of me drinks because it wants to get away from my pain. The other part of me is suicidal because it wants to get away from my pain, but these parts are in conflict, for example. And when you listen to the part that wants to drink in your client, and when you listen to the part that's suicidal in your client, you often find that both of those parts are protecting the same wound, but they just do it in very different ways. 
And I believe that's what's happening in culture and society in this polarity politically, that you can hold an extreme belief that are seemingly polar opposites, but they're often rooted in the same wound. And so I would really like to bridge the political divide, as I did with my family member at that family wedding, and be able to see the commonality in our wounding. And interestingly enough, I will tell you, when we left the wedding and both went to our respective homes and got on our planes, we hugged each other. And it was the first time we hugged each other kind of ever in our life because he felt my wound and I felt his wound. And we joined in our pain, not in our fighting and not in our protection. 